नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू दी फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ रिलेज इन दिस प्रेजेंटेशन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रिलेज लाइक ट्रैक रिलेज एंड अदर रिलेज विच आर यूज इन रेलवे सिग्नलिंग सिस्टम इन द फर्स्ट थ्री पार्ट्स we have discussed about uh, different type of queue style relays in this part we will be deferred discussing about other relays are, uh, like a track relays uh, slow acting relays slow to pick up relays and uh, such other special relays so in the first three parts we have discussed about uh, the basic construction features and uh, working voltage and other such parameters of all the regularly used relays now let us start with uh, track relays qt2 style track relay so this qt2 type uh, track relay used in uh, tracks in anari area so what are the uh, basic uh, parameters it is having uh, a coil resistance of 9 ohms while a pickup voltage of 1.4 volts generally we are having 2f1b uh, configuration that is mainly used to reduce the load on the armature but presently we are getting a 4f2b relays also sensitive and can operate at low voltages this is a specialty of this relay back contacts used for cross protection to prevent the repeater relay from picking up in case of false fade so these uh, relays are used uh, back contacts are used for cross protection for fail safe similarly the maximum magnetization permitted is 300% of the rated pickup value the rated pickup value as we have seen is 1.4 volts while the minimum excitation is 125% of the rated pickup value so that the front contact will have required sufficient pressure while the percent rate shall not be less than 68% this uh, is generally this, this has to be used in only as a track relay in non re areas next we have qta2 relay this relay is an ac immunized dc neutral track relay what are the basic parameters you can see it is 9 ohms while the pickup voltage is 1.4 volts the current rating will be between 120 milliamps to 140 milliamps depending upon various factors this current will be changing maximum permissible excitation is 300% of the rated pickup value that is you can take give up to 4.2 volts only maximum by minimum excitation is 125% of rated pickup value that comes to 1.75 volts for any track relay it means that the relay on the uh, the relay voltage should be 1.75 to 4.2 volts for correct and proper operation of the relay its percentage relay shall not be less than 68% and uh, 4f2b relays are nowadays being used the features of this relay include ac immunity of 50 volts ac copper slug is provided in the core at its armature end to get this feature by this feature the relay becomes slow to pick up maximum the what does it mean actually ac immunity when you give ac voltage to the relay up to 300 volts uh, up to 50 volts in in uh, track relays while 300 volts in other uh, q style uh, line relays this track relay will have only up to 50 volts ac so if, if 50 volts ac comes on to the track relay the track relay will not have any difference in its operation while the maximum length of track circuit well we using this qta2 relay is 450 meters here we are using back contacts similarly for cross protection uh when we use qta2 relays only qspa1 relay is used as its repeater relay that is tpr for this track circuit so finally the application we use this track relay in re area only as track relay the next track relay qbat so there are three types of track relays qt2 qta2 and qbat 
QBAT pickup voltage is 1.1 to 1.75 1.75 volts. Generally, 1.75 volts uh, track relays are being used in railways. While pickup voltage is 1 for current will be 140 milliamps to 175 milliamps. And the specialty of this relay is it is having an AC immunity of 80 volts. This uh, 80 volts is basically achieved because of provision of a um, permanent magnet along with your copper slug. AC immunity is achieved by copper slug and permanent magnet at the core helps biasing and raising the AC immunity value. Here also we need to use QSPA1 relay when as a repeater relay when we use QBAT as a track relay. Coming to the construction uh, part, this relay has is almost similar to QBCA1 relay except for the contacts. The maximum length of the track circuit is 720 meters which can be extended up to 750 meters. Nowadays with the feed end and relay and choke, we are giving 750 meters the maximum track length that is permitted when we are using QBAT relay. This most important point here is when you use this QBAT relay, in case of a block joint defective, a normal track relay may pick up by the polarity from the adjacent track circuit. So adjacent track circuit 1180-11BT. 11BT ka voltage a 1180 track relay ko pick up kar sakta hai. Lekin agar QBAT relay lagayenge to Baju wale track se koi effect nahi padega even when there is a block joint defective. So as discussed, this is used in uh, as track relay in RE area for long track lengths. Now let us talk about a slow acting relays. Why these relays are required? These relays are required in railway signaling. Uh, on various occasions. Their operation is delayed for a period of few seconds or you can say milliseconds. This is required to keep track circuits controlled by them live even after their own feed is cut off. That is if the feed of the track relay is cut off because of any circuit obligations then the track relay should be in picked up condition for a small millisecond so that our circuit is complete. So we use in SR circuits, ZR circuits, even in WCR circuits, this circuit is used. These relays may be classified as slow to pick up and slow to release relays, slow to pick up relays and slow to release relays. How this is technically achieved? Let us discuss about this character. By internal means in, for relays QSPA1 and QSRA1 relays are examples of this. So by providing some uh, material inside that is copper slug and magnetic shunt, these relays by nature become slow to release. If we are not having any internal provision, then we can make them through external means also. Here let us see how actually this will affect. Here you can see this is the flux that is generated in a in a relay in a slow acting slow pickup slow to pick up or slow to release relays. This is the flux that is developed uh, flux while this is the time. Here this line is the coil flux developed flux developed due to the supply given to the coil while this is the flux developed because of the internal parts that is magnetic shunt or um, parts that are provided inside. So these two are the fluxes that are developed while this is the resultant flux because of these two fluxes together this is the resultant flux. So whenever supply is given to the coil if there are no internal parts that is a magnetic shunt is not available then the relay coil flux will be like this and the relay picks up at this time. Now when we provide the 
magnetic shunt there is a reverse flux that is developed here hence the resultant flux the time the at which the relay picks up is here so you can see this is the extra time that has taken that is taken by the relay to pick up similarly when the voltage is removed that is is over, circuit becomes open and there is no voltage on the relay still there is some amount of flux that is available which makes it slow to resist how you can see this is the coil flux while this is the flux because of this sleeve that is provided inside while this is the resultant flux which is a combination of flux developed by the coil and the sleeve so in this resultant flux this is the time when the track relay is dropping normally it will drop here at this point but because of the availability of the extra magnetic shunt we are dropping it at this extra time this is the extra time that is being taken by the relay to drop that is how the relay is become becoming slow to release one example i have told you qspa1 relay this relay we have already discussed in previous parts so let us see only the important points here the pickup time because of the provision of the copper slug and the magnetic shunt here is uh, changed to 540 to 600 milliseconds normally it will be less than 200 milliseconds but here we are getting 540 to 600 milliseconds for the relay to pick up that is the time delay while the release time will be 140 to 200 milliseconds this is happening because of the magnetic shunt that is provided and the copper slug the other relay is qs ra1 relay here also it is slow to release this relay is become slow to release the difference here is that we are using this relay for hpr dpr uh, in re area the specialty is magnetic shunt is provided at the heel piece end heel piece end it becomes slow to release while we provide here it becomes slow to pick up if there is no means of providing if we are not having that relays at times we can use external means also that is providing diode resistant capacitor to make the relay slow to release a rectifier is connected across the relay coil to make it slow to release with its cathode on the positive side and anode on the negative side the time lag so obtained is around 250 to 500 milliseconds here this is generally used for hr and dr relays the only problem is this at times can create failures external means while internal pins there will not be any failure the relays will not fail in external this diode become punctured you may have failures also to increase the time from let us say 250 milliseconds is not enough we require it for three or four seconds as in a track uh, as in a point operation so here we use uh, resistances and capacitors as required in this circuit so one of the best examples is wjr holding here we are using capacitors and resistance to make this relay slow to release by external means here we are connecting the resistance uh, series with the condenser to limit the initial charging current both are connected in series while there is another method by providing resistance and uh, capacitor this is method is used to make the relay slow to pick up that is when the supply is given to the relay coil r1 and r2 restricted way that is we are already having a resistance so the first the condenser gets charged not the relay coil only after the condenser gets um, saturated then the supply will go and pick up the relay by this this relay picking up will become slow to pick up 
with the resistance in series and suitable value of capacitors across the relay diode coil, the relay becomes slow to pick up due to simultaneous charging of condenser in parallel. During release, the condenser discharges quickly through the relay coil, neutralizing the effect of its inductors. Generally, we in some railways, we, it is used for TSR, JSLR and UIRs also. Uh, this practice is not used in some railways, while some railways use it. Let me next come to this uh, polar relays, DC polar relay. This is generally used in uh, double line block instruments and uh, some other circuits in uh, gate warning systems and such other places. So here different contacts for different DC polarities are connected to it. It is sensitive to the direction of current. Here you can see the coil connections R1 and R2. If positive comes in R1, this will be uh, going to one direction. While negative comes here, this will be going in the opposite direction. So this uh, uh, contact will be making either normal or reverse depending on the direction of current that is uh, given in the coil R1 and R2. The pickup value for this is 17 milliamps, while maximum permitted is 25 milliamps. The rate range will be from 17 to 25 milliamps, while the resistance is 77 ohms. The drop value is not less than 50% of the pickup value. AC immunization is only 10 volts. So that is the reason why when we use this relay, we have to use a filter unit in series. That is what is used in double line block instrument. While the current carrying capacity is uh, 1 amp, generally this is used in double line block instruments and other relays. Lamp proving relays. These are the most famous relays that are regularly used which are called ECRs. This is a current sensing DC line relays. Here though we are giving 110 volts EC supply for ECR circuits, this actually relays a relay works on DC supply. Operates by derivating power drawn from the AC signal lamp circuits. While the current is around 140 milliamps at 110 volts AC. Generally it will be 108 uh, milliamps to 140 milliamps. This is used for checking the lightning condition of uh, whether the signals are working as a lightning or not. Here I have given a small uh, circuit here. You see whenever uh, this is the portion that is available in your ECR relays. All this is available in your ECR. Here you can see the step down transformer. This is a bridge rectifier and this is your relay coil R1, R2 of your uh, ECR. Basically when you, when the relay uh, is picked up, control relay is picked up, 110 volt supply is going through this uh, wires. When the light is glowing, when your uh, signal is glowing, the current is consumed here. Let us say as I have told 140 milliamps. So when there is current consumed, the voltage is developed in the secondary side of your transformer step down transformer about 10 volts ac is developed roughly this voltage is changed to dc with the help of the bridge rectifier and your ecr coil picks up that ecr is used in your circuits so do comment if you have any questions thank you this is the end of release jai hind